great. Yeah. What makes the, me doing this extra special today is that um, as a little girl growing up on Carter Creek, my mama had a milk cow, and the milk cow's name was Jersey, and she was a Jersey milk cow. And so mama would milk the cow, and she'd save the cream, usually for two or three days. And then she would put it in her daisy butter churn, and we would take turns turning the handle, and mama would say, now don't, don't do it too fast, that doesn't help. And she would guide us through the long summer process of making butter. And then when I grew up, uh, I married a Daisy boy and moved to the Daisy Ranch, and that's where my home is. And my husband's grandpa is the person who created the Daisy Butter Churn and um, made his fortune doing that and used some of that money to purchase the Daisy Ranch for his son. And that's where our family lives today. So it just makes it special to me to be Carter County girl who has a whole connection with the Daisy Butter that, Churn. That's totally cool. I didn't know that, <laughs> that like Daisy true. store and you yeah. being a Daisy, I had no clue that that was connected to the Butter Churn. My father was especially fond of the Daisy family. He loved the Daisy Ranch and he felt a kindred spirit with them because uh, during the creation of the Ozark National Scenic Riverways in the 1960s, the federal government through eminent domain took about 450 acres from the Daisy family's farm to help create the National Scenic Riverways. And my daddy lamented that terribly, saying it took all their good farming land, it took all the fields where they could grow corn for the cows and the pigs, and daddy just thought that was a, a terrible tragedy. And he had a, a sense of kindred spirit because his family's farm in Illinois had been taken by eminent domain for the creation of Rend Lake. So he had that special connection so with your, that family. So your dad actually grew up over in Illinois? He did. He was born <clears throat> in the small town of Whittington, or outside the small town of Whittington, Illinois. Okay. Well, is, that makes him an Illinois fiddler, too, yes, right? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I have a collection over there of <laughs> Illinois fiddle tunes. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, but yes, that's, that, that made dad very fond of And me. what was your dad's name? My father, his name was Everett Pettit. Okay. Mm -hmm. And my mama was Phyllis Pettit. And mama was born in Bransville, grew up in Bransville, Missouri. So oh, okay. West Lane. Okay. So I'm a Carter County girl. I was actually born on in the house on, on Carter Creek. Cool. And uh, it's where the ATV dealership is now. Oh, but. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> So the Daisy family, um, they started the butter churn when? In the very early 1900s in Dallas, Texas, uh, Grandpa Daisy met with another businessman. They were wanting to create a household item. They were going to make their fortune doing something in that manner because that, they were door-to-door -door salesmen. And um, they created a very crude glass jar and wooden paddle butter churn. And the partner in the business fell into poor health and he wanted to sell his share out to Grandpa Daisy and so he did. And uh, within a short time, Grandpa Daisy had uh, refined the butter churn and um, then he, because he was having a difficult time finding property in Texas, moved to St. Louis where there were some incentives to start businesses and created uh, originally the butter churn and then um, the other things that you see that are more household items. So was it always called Daisy Butter Churn when it started? It, it, to my knowledge, yes. Okay. Yes, it was. And the idea was that it would allow um, the ladies of the home to create their own butter quick, much more quickly than oh, yeah. the old the old fashion. Now if you, if you turn a butter churn, you'll see it still takes Quite, quite a length of time to do it. It was much faster than the old uh, Dasher style butter chicken. So. And we had someone giving us cream last year, so far oh. at night. So, yes, we churned lots of butter last year. It was <laughs> like, do you want to take a churn and the cream home? <laughs> so, yes, I know. <laughs> it does. It takes a long time. Yeah. 
how it's doing you know, it's starting to separate just a tiny bit. And my my cream was still pretty cool, so I'm going to hold it on my lap. So I have the handy handle. Those handles are handy. That's they a good are. name for them. Yeah. I see you have one behind you, too. Mm-hmm. has an angled handle. There, uh, there's two more in the front year, year, um, room that I don't know. What, one is a big daisy one. Uh -huh. I'll bring it in in just a few minutes. One of the other things that um, is, is related in the daisy story was that because they were glass jars, they were they were breakable and so I believe it was the Maxwell House Coffee Company mm -hmm. started selling their coffee in jars that could be reused to fit the daisy butter churn so if um, a lady broke her daisy jar she would be she would have an incentive to buy Maxwell House coffee because it had the lovely replacement that is so jar. cool to know I didn't know that one either yeah so sometimes you'll see a daisy butter churn and you will see that it's a large coffee, like it doesn't say daisy on the jar, and that could be a replacement jar from a coffee company or some other company. So, so these metal ones over here, yes. these are the ones I've never <laughs> seen before. They are very unique. Now, do they precede the glass jars or? No, they, they, they don't. Um, those were heavier type or maybe a large family um, they were they were sturdier uh, but, but not necessarily created before to my knowledge okay. <laughs> so, I, but I like those very much they have um, the large one you'll see has the spout for draining off when you finish yes. your butter and you're rinsing it with the cold water uh -huh. and that would drain off your butter milk so. wow my dad would have been a happy camper. He loved buttermilk. Oh, did he? <laughs> Corn print buttermilk. That's one of my favorite things, too. Yeah. Now, Petit, it's French, isn't it? It's yes, French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My now, Daisy is, is what? Um, Irish? I is believe so. I'm not, I'm not really confident uh, okay. on what it is. There's some discussion in the family about that. I believe it's Irish. Oh, okay. So, the, the little history book talks about. There are many um, interesting characters in the Daisy family. Um, one of my favorite stories that's in there was uh, a great great uncle of Grandpa Daisy's, but he uh, he was a uh, he was a cattle farmer in Illinois, mm -hmm. and he uh, he was uh, in trouble, and he sought legal counsel from a young lawyer named Abraham Lincoln, and he. Uh, <laughs> Uh, was successfully defended by his attorney, Mr. Lincoln, um, for the crime of moving cattle on Sunday. And so there's a really cute letter uh, in, in the family history book about how Mr. Lincoln defended Mr. Daisy uh, for, the, for the crime of moving Big cattle, cattle on, on Sunday. Sunday. That's and, cute. And discuss which was the greater crime to to move the cattle on Sunday or to leave them without water all pinned up and suffering in the heat. And that's, it's a good argument. Yeah, it's a very, a very good argument. You can see our cream is wanting to separate a little bit. All right. So the Daisy family moved to St. Louis. Then what brought them to Carter County? That's, a, that's an interesting piece. Now, depending on a person's political views, <laughs> There was a time, um, and, and really my father told this story, not just about the Daisy family, but about other uh, very wealthy families who had young sons in, say, 1914, 1916. Um, there was thinking that someone who was um, a farmer was uh, of great benefit to our country, not so much as serving as a soldier in the First World War, but in, uh, in being a farmer. And so there were some families that purchased large tracts of land and provided their sons with uh, the opportunity to be farmers as opposed to serving in the military. Now, whether or not that was how the Daisy Ranch came to be in Carter County or not is a matter of some discussion around the coffee table and the Daisy family gatherings. However, 
the purchase of the land and the construction of the house does coincide with that particular time in history. So it also turned out that Grandpa Daisy did not serve in the military. Did not do that. So, however, that happened to be. Uh, I think it's kind of a creative way to go about uh, purchasing land. So, and it benefited um, uh, several folks in the community as well. Mr. Chilton, Ben Chilton, mm -hmm. uh, from from Chilton, Missouri, uh, was the farm manager at the Daisy Ranch for many years. Oh, okay. So, and there are many other folks who have lived there and worked to take care of the cattle and the hogs, especially during the open uh, open range days. It's also a team of men who were there to build the house, and it took approximately two years to create the house. So, a lot of stonework in it. Yes, it is. We'd very much like you to come see us. I would love to. to yeah, we've been so connected through yes. 50,000 ways. <laughs> yes, that's very true. It is a small world. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you let me come today. I can join oh, you. I, I've got this private recording <laughs> going on. It's like everybody is a snoozy blues. I went to get the grandkids, and um, Nancy says, Well, I'm taking them to Markham Springs yeah. tomorrow morning. I'm like, okay, we'll be back. Because <laughs> they usually love to come to the museum and hang out. And it's really beautiful. I love the stove. It reminds me almost exactly of the stove that was in our house when I was a little girl. The ash pan is in the mm -hmm. right spot in the oven in the reservoir. Oh, it reminds me of my grandma's. Yeah. I love it. When the water pipes would freeze in the winter, Mama would keep water on the stove and give us a bath and a wash tub. Well, actually, when I was down at the farm in Arkansas, I had a wood stove yeah. that the guy that built the house bought for like ten dollars okay. out in Colorado and moved it. Of course, if you've ever moved one of those, you oh, know what what's so involved. Heavy. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're made out of the old stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's nothing like baking and just yeah. sitting there reading a book, feeding the fire. Yeah. I remember Mama would let us take a little pinch of biscuit dough and we would put it on that hot, uh, just on the surface and it would mm -hmm. get black and we'd flip over and make our own little biscuits. Yeah. Biscuits in the oven. So we thought we were pretty cool being able to do that. I think we're getting closer all the while to our butter. 